can the populist movement survive without Steve Bannon and who could lead it? Well, I think that we're looking right now at the age-old question, what came first, Trump or Bannon? Who needs who more? Very clearly, the entire political world has decided that Donald Trump is the leader of that movement, not Steve Bannon. I think that for anybody who goes to the pages of Breitbart day in and day out, anyone who considers themselves an alt-right or conservative, they don't, they don't feel those things because Steve Bannon told them to. They, they, they really rally behind Donald Trump. I don't know a single voter, a single person who's ever asked their congressman or candidate, hey, are you with Steve Bannon? The litmus test is, are you with Donald Trump? So I think Steve Bannon is finding out, really, that he overstepped, that he overestimated the influence and power and name recognition that he had, flew too close to the sun, and is now on an island all by himself and isolated. Uh, so, Kurt, let me ask a, a slightly different but related question at this point, because you worked with Breitbart. You know this organization. Is uh, Mr. Bannon an asset or a liability to Breitbart right now? Oh, I think there's no question, David, that he's a liability. And the reason why he's been hung out there, and it made, you know, he made this apology out of desperation. He waited the better part of an entire week before putting something out there publicly, trying to walk this back in any way. And as the president has, has shown, it's kind of too little too late. He's made up his mind, Bannon is out. I think the deeper issue for Breitbart is, some, where does their funding come from? It comes from the Mercers. The Mercers also publicly distance themselves from Bannon, saying they wouldn't fund him anymore. The question that Breitbart's trying to answer internally right now is, will the Mercers still support Breitbart if Bannon is there, or are they demanding that they fire Bannon and still financially support Breitbart? Breitbart has lost a few advertisers in 2017. What's his financial position look like right now? You know, there's, a, there's been this organization called Sleeping Giants who go after every single person who advertises, every single company that advertises at Breitbart and, and targets them and, and calls on them to stop giving money to a platform that they see puts out very hatred and divisive content. In the last year, almost 3,000 advertisers have walked away and stopped sponsoring Breitbart. It means that they're more financially dependent on private financing, like billionaires such as the Mercers. And if, and if the Mercers aren't going to fund Bannon or Breitbart, they're in deep financial trouble. So, so you refer to the Mercers, who have been critical to Steve Bannon and to Breitbart. There was a report yesterday that we had that actually the Mercers may be talking with Peter Thiel out in Silicon Valley to create a whole new conservative news organization. Is that plausible? Is it possible they would move away from Breitbart almost no matter what? Well, I think it's absolutely possible because you look at right now with the whole landscape you know, changing and Steve Bannon had kind of anointed himself the leader of, of the alt-right movement using his platform, Breitbart, using the Mercer's paycheck to try to support candidates, campaigns, disrupt the Republican primary process. Well, all those things are gone now. So we're looking at post ban in a new world order where some platform, somebody, some media person could emerge as the go-to destination for the alt-right if Bannon and Breitbart fall off by the wayside. And, and there's certainly an opportunity there for people to put their money behind a new platform to emerge that appeals to that center-right audience because it's right there for the taking.